Welcome to the SBI Podcast, offering CEOs, sales and marketing leaders ideas to make the number. Hello and welcome to SBI's weekly podcast. My name is George Delos Reyes and joining me is Matt Shares. We're with SBI, a sales and marketing consulting firm dedicated to helping you make your number. On today's show, Matt and I are going to be discussing the topic of competitive advantage. And we will be addressing questions such as, do you know what your competitive advantage is? Have you selected the right one? Has the marketplace validated your competitive advantage? And is your organization aligned to deliver on that advantage? So Matt, a key element of a corporate strategy is defining your unique Competitive, competitive advantage in the marketplace. And I stress the word unique because as an organization, as a CEO, you need to be certain about what you do better than your competitors and rally the entire organization around that advantage. So for the sake of today's discussion and for our viewers, there are really three basic sources of competitive advantage. You've got price, you've got product, you've got customer experience. If you have not picked one, the problem with this is your customers are going to pick one for you, and they're going to pick price, and they're going to commoditize you. Worse still, if you haven't optimized your cost structure for price, it's going to cost you revenue and margin, and that is a formula for a slow death. Unfortunately, we find many executives have not proactively defined their competitive advantage. They've let their customers pick for them, and left to their own devices, customers always choose price. Mm. Another mistake we often encounter is trying to serve all three, George. That CEO who can't put his foot down and say, this is how we differentiate. So they want to be price, they want to be product, they want to be customer experience. And this is a very risky strategy, trying to be all things to all people. Think of it like this. A typical company spends roughly 35% of revenue on their go-to-market team, which is product, marketing, and sales. And in this scenario, you could have your R&D team building products to deliver this amazing product. Meanwhile, marketing thinks that they should be focusing on customer experience. What a right? disconnect. Yeah, incredible disconnect. Yeah. So, and then the worst part is the sales, sales is sitting there going, well, I'm trying to say both. So they end up confusing the customer. You know what happens to them? They're now competing on price. Mm. So hence this friction, this tension. You have the functional areas communicating incorrectly to the marketplace and they have problems internally. So your sales team, you know, if you contrast that, you, if you were going to compete on price, you would structure your sales team totally different, George. You would probably use a generalist model. You wouldn't have specialists. Mm -hmm. You try to leverage things like inside sales, lower touch, right, lower cost, perhaps hiring uh, younger, less experienced reps that you can get at a lower price. One's not better than the other, but this whole concept of choosing, because competitive advantage sounds squishy, mm -hmm. But the concept everybody of, wants to have a, yeah, every everybody wants <laughs> to have a great one. customer experience, and everybody right? wants to say customer experience. Yeah, and oftentimes it's like you got to pick one and be exceptional at that. Make your choice. Yeah, I mean, I um, I really it really resonates the the inherent misalignment that occurs when you try to be all things to all people. Well, no doubt, and it's funny because. Uh, we had Brian Walker. He was a guest on the SBI podcast. And Brian Walker is the CEO at Herman Miller. And he discussed with Greg, our CEO, how his product and sales team aligned to deliver on their competitive advantage, which was evolving in the marketplace. Let's take a listen on what Brian's conversation with Greg entailed. Uh, we're here with Brian Walker. Brian's the CEO of Herman Miller. And we were talking about strategic alignment. I want to dive a little deeper into this. One of the things that, that uh, my exposure to you uh, educated me on was when you make a product change. So your organization came out with the living office, which was, uh, you know, very much going from a product focus to a solution focus. And I thought it was really fantastic. And the product team and the sales team have to be together. How do you keep the product team and the sales team connected at the hip? It's uh, a great question. Um, I think it starts with um, making sure that you, we are deliberate about. And living office, in our mind, is a, is a is really a 
a strategy to do two things, Greg. Number one, it's how do we help customers make the best informed choices about the things that they want to buy from us to create the places that are going to help their businesses or their hospital or their educational institution do what they do better. It's also a methodology for our product teams to meet with our sales teams and with customers to understand not only um, how our current products are solving needs, but where we have unmet needs that we have not yet developed a solution or where the solution needs are changing. Hmm. And so the better we can be at describing what our portfolio of solutions are and how they map to the customer's needs and they have the, the, the product teams talking to the sales folks from the position of saying, here's our current solution set and here's how it's going to evolve over time. I think that's how you can keep those two connected that they believe that they're all on the same page of actually working for the customer mm -hmm. versus the product team thinking their goal is to get a thing to market and a sales team saying, yeah, well, that's interesting. You have things. My job is to solve the customer's problem. Mm -hmm. So I, I would tell you, this is one of our emerging capabilities that we're trying to get better at. Matt, you know, I really like the Herman Miller uh, example because it illustrates how two key functional areas work in concert to meet customer needs in a way that customer values. Brian Walker has chosen his competitive advantage. And there are many CEOs listening today that have decided how their organization will differentiate in the marketplace. But I would still like to challenge these CEOs with a few questions. So for example, if you pick price as your competitive advantage, how is the organization streaming its cost model to deliver their products to the market at a price lower than the competition, mm. right? And if you choose to differentiate on product, you know, is the organization investing in the product so it's superior to the alternatives in a way that the buyer values? Yeah. And lastly, if your advantage is customer experience, you know, and that's what you've chosen as a CEO, are you pressing the organization on how they are creating a unique experience that the buyers are willing to pay for, yeah. right? The point is whatever advantage you choose, the entire organization, everyone, products, sales, marketing, operations, everyone must be rallied around it and aligned to deliver on it. Yeah. So we need to go to a break, unfortunately, and but when we return, we'll continue the conversation and discuss the topic of picking the wrong differentiator. Each day, you receive hundreds of emails, tons of text messages, countless telephone calls, and sit in too many meetings. How do you find ideas to make the number with all this noise? The SBI blog filters all this nonsense for you and presents only first-rate ideas to make the number. Simplify your life. Subscribe to one blog and read the best content. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com and subscribe today. Welcome back. I'm George Delos Reyes, and joining me is my fellow SBIR, Matt Shears. And we've been discussing how to select the right competitive advantage and making sure your organization is aligned to deliver on that advantage. And in the last segment, Matt and I discussed three ways to differentiate in the marketplace. You can do it via price, product, or customer experience. And whichever competitive advantage you choose, a CEO must ensure the entire organization is rallied behind it and fully aligned to deliver on it. However you choose to differentiate, the entire organization must be on board. So we're gonna transition, and in this segment, we're gonna take the discussion a little bit further around false or artificial differentiation. And what I'm referring to is those situations when a company gets it wrong. They choose to differentiate on either price product or customer experience, and the market, otherwise known as their customers, they don't value it. Mm. So Matt, how does an organization know whether its differentiator is false or real? Yeah. So George, really there's three ways a company can have a false or artificial differentiator. So the first is false differentiation. This is differentiation that is not important to your marketplace or a false presumption mm. of superiority. 
So you can give us an example? Yeah. So you know what? Be something that I think matters, so I decide to take a product that I've built and I decide to put a set of features in it that I believe are absolutely critical yeah. because it's going to get me higher price and the market literally doesn't value it and they want to remove it. You know, we see that all the time. You see organization that have, you know, they came into existence as a great product company and their R&D department, they're so in love with their stuff, right? We, you know, I, we have no the doubt. best product. We have the, how can the market not love our product, right? No doubt. So they kind of, they continuously think that that's what it is. And in fact, the market is not reacting to it and it becomes a false differentiator. Correct. Yeah. Then we have uneconomic differentiation. This is differentiation that customers are unwilling to pay for. Where this, you might hear this and see this, George, is when a company launches a product, mm. they think they can sell it at X, and the sales team is coming back at X minus 20%, X minus 30%. Hey, I like what you're showing me, George. Yeah. I want to do business with you, but not at this price. Uneconomic differentiation. And you know the CEO is, doesn't want to hear that, and the product guy definitely doesn't want to hear that, but the sales leader is saying, hey, I'm not listening, there, I'm, hey, not listening. I'm not listening, I'm not listening. You guys I'm not may listening. think we got the best product <laughs> in the market, and we're telling you, it's not resonating. That's you know, right. we got the competitors out there selling it at 10, 15, 20% lower than us, and it's they're not valuing the differentiation. Correct. So that's okay. economic. Yeah. And the last, the third, is what we call unsustainable differentiation. Mm. So this is differentiation that is easily imitated. So George, think about this. <clears throat> I'm putting a feature set in my product, and it's a feature set that the market values. Mm. The problem is it's really easy for my competitors to mimic it. Right. Uh, and an example, if you chose to differentiate on customer experience, how can you potentially have a, um, you know, that type of false differentiator? Well, George, I'm going to assign you your own dedicated account manager. That account manager is going to be dedicated to your account. It's going to be at your beck and call 24-7. Because we do that, we're a better choice than company yeah. ABC. Oh, guess what? <laughs> In about 30 days, yeah, exactly. company ABC said, hey, wow, we're losing because we don't have customized account managers. Okay, I got a requisition on the street. I hired one. Boom. Yeah. Differentiation is gone. So, Matt, in the context of a false or artificial differentiation, losing sight of the customer is a sure way to get your competitive advantage wrong. No doubt. Right? You got to make sure that they value it, that they're willing to pay for it, et cetera. Yep. So we need to go to break again. When we come back, though, Matt and I will debate how to drive your competitive advantage through the organization, rally the entire organization around how you choose to differentiate in the marketplace. Stay tuned. Do you have too many things to do and not enough time to do them? Is finding time to learn best practices almost impossible? The SBI podcast is your solution. Turn time spent exercising, commuting, and traveling into productive learning time with a subscription to the SBI podcast. SBI podcast listeners get unique insight into real-world sales and marketing issues through interviews with your industry peers every week. Find us on iTunes by searching for Sales Benchmark Index Podcast and subscribe today. Welcome back. I'm George Delos Reyes, and I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Shares. And we've been talking about selecting the right competitive advantage. And we closed the last segment discussing how to make sure your differentiator is real, not false or artificial. As a CEO, you can choose or even inherit your competitive advantage. Either way, you need to rigorously challenge yourself and the organization to ensure it's real, first of all, and valued in the eyes of your buyers. But in this segment, we will assume you got it right. Now, Matt and I will tackle how to ensure your entire organization is aligned to deliver on that advantage. Matt, in our 2016 research report, we found that only 9% of companies achieved full strategic alignment. That means their functional areas are aligned to one another, and as an organization, they're aligned to the marketplace. And what's compelling about the research is that we found that companies that achieve high levels of strategic alignment experience up to a 30% drop in their customer acquisition cost and nearly a 26% bump in customer lifetime value. 
Yeah. <clears throat> well, interestingly enough, George, something else that stood out in the research is that the top 9% of companies increased their probability of success. They were four times more likely to hit their revenue goals than their competitors. We know this. Top performing companies clearly define their competitive advantage. It was real. Buyers were willing to pay for it. And the competition couldn't easily imitate it. Most importantly, these companies rallied around their differentiator. And they aligned themselves to deliver on it. Every function understood what their advantage was, and they built their strategy to deliver on it. So the big question many of our listeners are asking is how to ensure your entire organization is aligned to deliver on that advantage. What does this even look like? Well, recently, our CEO, Greg, had Fred Florjanic, the chairman of Ramsey Industries, on the SBI podcast. Fred and Greg talk about the CEO having a regular cadence to drive alignment through the organization and ensure that differentiation is cascading. Let's listen in on what Fred and Greg have to say. So I want to um, talk to you, Fred, specifically about um, strategic alignment from product to marketing to sales. And there's a little bit of a debate that's going on right now. Our, our belief is that strategies at the functional level should be documented. And I'm not talking about writing, you know, some extensive document, but they should be documented to where, you know, if you're a marketing leader or a sales leader, you can go around, you know, to your other functional leaders. Let's say you sit down with the CFO and you say, here's my strategy. What do you think? And then the CFO can say, well, your strategy is out of alignment with my strategy in the following ways. And let's collaborate to pull those things together. And that's just one example. You can, you can do that across IT, HR, et cetera. And what we found is, is that, a common reason why companies miss the number is because they're out of alignment. Everyone's working really hard, but we're not all working in unison. How have you driven alignment across functions? You know, I, I hearken back to uh, my CEO days um, at Safety Clean, and you, you raise a very interesting day-to-day -day, uh, dilemma for uh, any particular senior management team, and in, in particular the, the CEO, because there's there's conflicting priorities depending upon who you talk to, and that's one of the reasons why I would have absolutely mandatory weekly senior staff meetings. Hmm. Weekly? Uh, weekly. Monday mornings. Uh, actually, it started at around uh, 10 in the morning and would go through to about 2 in the afternoon. To 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 do exactly that, to get on the same page. Because um, if, if the marketing guy has his own particular agenda and he doesn't report to the sales guy, the sales team has its priority. Um, the IT people have, have their issues. HR has its issues. There's training requirements, et cetera. <laughs> the operational manufacturing guys have... Uh, have competing issues, and everybody wants the limited amount of capital and or financial resources or even people resources. Yep. Uh, and so a CEO is constantly playing referee uh, or adjudicating, you know, where, where the money gets spent, where the people and priorities uh, get applied. So... Um, you got to have everybody on the same page. You can't have silos in a company. Uh, and if sales and marketing aren't working together, you're going to have a disaster. Mm -hmm. So, And if sales and marketing are working together, but they don't have the financial support um, from the finance team in terms of understanding pricing, understanding cost, um, that's not going to help. And if the manufacturing and operational side of the business can't deliver new products priced appropriately uh, for the market because of competitive uh, constraints, et cetera, then, then again, the team is not working in concert with one another. So that was, that was the full-time job of a CEO in addition to being the, the sales marketing leader out there in the, in the marketplace was um, adjudicating priorities mm. between uh, the senior team. So, as you heard, while CEO at Safety Clean, a billion dollar organization, Fred was holding weekly cross-functional meetings to flush out misalignment. This misalignment ensures that if you have a competitive advantage and you're differentiating one way, everybody's stacking hands. It doesn't even matter which one of the three. You picked one, you're driving it, 
you're iterating on it, and you're staying aligned to it. So this is the type of rigor that, when exhibited, generates above average results. Yeah, and it definitely breaks down the silos that we typically see in organizations. And I love the fact that uh, Fred, you know, he was, as CEO, driving that. Absolutely. So, Matt, we started off this segment discussing how to ensure your entire organization is aligned to deliver on its competitive advantage. And we know that requires two key elements. Yeah. So, number one, developing your functional strategies to deliver on your competitive advantage. So, if I pick price, all my strategies are aligned around, hey, how am I going to be the price leader? If I yep. pick product, how is my entire organization rallied around that or competitive or um, customer experience? Yeah. Okay. And number two, maintaining cross-functional alignment around your differentiator. So one thing is say, hey, I'm going to deliver on it in my, in my functional areas, but how do I actually make sure that everyone's aligned to it? Everyone's delivering yeah. on it. There's harmony. All the wheels are spinning in the right and in the same direction. Yeah. So companies that conquer these two key elements are what SBI calls level five on the revenue growth maturity model. And only 9% of companies achieve level five. So SBI developed the revenue growth maturity, uh, maturity model to help companies assess how they rank in terms of strategic alignment and to determine where they want to be in the future. And as the image shows, there are five levels to the revenue growth maturity model. So let's take a look at, at this and maybe walk through the, the audience through that. Yeah. So starting <clears throat> level one, Matt. So I think, you know, in the context of our show today, we're going to expand. So we'll start with level one. At level one, I'm in chaos. And what chaos says is I've got a corporate strategy, but some people know it, some people don't. And functional strategies, they don't exist. Mm. So we're operating on the heroic efforts of the one. All right. That's what level one looks like. Level two would be what we call defined, right? And a level two organization, like a level one, has a corporate strategy, it's documented, but now the functional leaders have also documented their uh, strategies as well. It's obviously an improvement over level one, yeah. but the problem is with level two is that they do those, they, they generate their strategies in isolation of one, one another, they do it once a year at probably a you know, yearly planning yeah. uh, meeting, and after that, it goes on the shelf. It yeah. really doesn't drive behavior. It doesn't, it's, we're not measuring to it or yeah. anything like that. So, you know, again, growth is not very predictable. Yep. How about well, level three? Then you move to level three where you're at implemented. I've got a corporate strategy. I've got functional strategies. And my functional strategy, sales, marketing, product, talent, they're implemented, but they're getting done in silos. Mm. The problem with that, George, is that you don't have the alignment between each function. So everybody's running, the wheels are spinning, yeah. but they're not all going in the same direction, and you get a lot of finger pointing. How about level four? Well, level four, now we're making progress, mm. right? I've got strategies, corporate and functional. They're implemented by my teams, and I've got internal alignment. And when I get to level four, I'm starting to make some progress because we are all rowing in the same direction, as they say. Challenge with that is I'm not aligned with the external market, level gotcha. five which is where you want to be. And when it comes to competitive advantage, there's no better way to articulate and maintain a competitive advantage than being at level five. So in the context of our show today, let's expand on the definition of a level five organization. So in terms of alignment, a level five company has achieved what we call full strategic alignment. That's both internally, right, amongst their, the functional areas, yeah. but also externally, right? And each functional area has a strategy that aligns to and operationalizes the corporate strategy. Yep. And each member of the functional group understands their strategy and it governs the day-to-day -day actions of the functional area members. Yep. There's also a regular cross-functional cadence to ensure alignment between product, sales, HR, and marketing is happening. Level five organizations are also aligned to the market. These organizations regularly listen to the market and their buyers to understand, capture, and react to trends. And it's through this regular external alignment that level five organizations constantly validate their competitive advantage. So before we close today's show, I'm gonna challenge our, our listeners to plot themselves on the revenue growth maturity model. If you're a CEO, a functional leader, take a look at where you think your organization is on the revenue growth maturity model. If you're at level five, congratulations. You are best in class. If you're not, Sit down as an executive team to understand what are the gaps, and most importantly, how will you close those gaps to get to level five? Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. 
We thank you, our audience, for tuning in. If you enjoyed this show, I suggest you subscribe to SBI TV at salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash TV. Or you can find us at our SBI YouTube channel. We have some outstanding guests confirmed for future episodes you will not want to miss. If you would like more help with the concepts discussed in today's episode, just go to salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 dash workshop to request your own workshop today. Until then, we wish you the best of luck as you try and make your number. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on SBI services, case studies, the SBI team and how we work, or to subscribe to our other offerings, please visit us at salesbenchmarkindex.com.